shows uh, the only thing that, that happened different was you know, I think three of those shows we finished the set the whole set with I for an eye yeah and for like 10 minutes the crowd was like screaming so fly non-stop they had to come back mm -hmm. and play two more songs and the only other songs we knew was simple tour songs <laughs> so I had to play inner self and territory I think nice. um, but, but, but that was great because it, it just felt so good to, to finish the whole set and add them on even more after yeah. the whole show is finished, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are sitting in the dressing room and the promoter comes in and he's like, I think you guys got to go back there because they want more. <laughs> so we went back and played more. Very yeah. excited. Um, this venue, I was here with the uh, so called first started uh, with Logan. Yeah. When Logan is the band, we play here and we play. Um, so I'm looking forward, especially at this moment right now. So Fly is experiencing a great uh, live uh, experience. We have a great set list. Mm -hmm. They work really good with the crowd. And it's, it, get, it gets, it's kind of impossible to play everything everybody want to hear from my career because it's so long and there's so many songs. But I think we have a set list now that is very close to a perfect set list to the fans.
is actually new is actually the the fact that there is less uh, world music and less tribal and more back to metal and hardcore, mm -hmm. um, which is uh, two kind of music I like a lot. And, the opening of the album, for example, Blood, Bath and Beyond, is a very hardcore yeah. uh, song and was very unique. When I first made the song, I did not knew it was going to be opening of the album. I just made the song because it sounded cool. Mm -hmm. And then listening to it later on, I found out, okay, this is the, actually the opening of the album. No intro. We're going to start the album with a hardcore song. Nobody's expecting that. Nobody's doing that right now. That should be totally different from everything else I've done forever. Uh, I think the closest thing um, to that that I've done in the past was Nail Bomb. Yeah. With Wasting Away from Point Blank, which is a hardcore song also. But Blood Bat and Beyond is even more hardcore than Nail Bomb. So mm -hmm. it was a really great way to start. And then after that came Rise of the Fallen with Greg from the Lynch Escape Plan, yeah. which was a great collaboration. Greg did some great vocals and um, the song turned out really, really amazing, really cool in the end. And then there's a song with Tommy from Prong, uh, Little Injection. Also really exciting too, with a kind of Prong vibe in the middle. And then, uh, the other songs on the album like Kingdom, Jeffrey Dahmer, um, uh, Great Depression are just really um, songs that were made for the mosh pit, you know. Yeah. When I was making this record at home, every time I made a riff, I closed my eyes and I imagined just a crazy mosh pit, just people killing each other on a pit. And that's how this album was done. And it feels live, and it was recorded also kind of live. Um, a lot of the songs were recorded with all of us in the studio playing together. And then afterwards we did overdubs. But all the drums were recorded like that, like live music. So it's to feel like you are right there with the band. <laughs>
the songs of, of Soul Fly numbers are made because of tradition, because the first Soul Fly had a, a song called Soul Fly, yeah. and then the second one had Soul Fly 2. Mm -hmm. yeah. All made similar. Uh, they were made in um, acoustic version, melodic, spiritual, almost like calling something out of uh, more of the spiritual world. Um, to so to show a different side of soul fly that's not mm -hmm. it's without guitars without distortion mm -hmm. you know uh, and I did every soul fly every one of them are different from each other and the newest one soul fly seven is the more kind of um, the vibe on the on the studio board kind of going for some kind of the police of the 80s um, yeah yeah this is how it sounds like, yeah. Kind of the police was the main influence on it. Some kind of okay. melodic guitar stuff that mm -hmm. reminds of the police. And we found it really kind of cool to, to venture in that area. And we just made the song like that. So it was you know, kind of just accidental, actually. Yeah, I think it's important, you know, like. Um, Lyrics are um, you're communicating to the crowd what you're thinking, you know, what's in your head. And a lot of times, uh, true music, I can say stuff that I normally wouldn't say uh, talking to somebody, but I can do it with, with, the, with the lyrics, you know, I can do it through the songs. And uh, a little injection is actually against. Uh, the way the people are killed uh, in the States. And it's about somebody that's actually, um, that's innocent, but he's been found guilty. Yeah. And he's been put to death. And it's uh, especially against, you know, George Bush, because he has killed more people in, in lethal injection than any other mm -hmm. politician in the world, yeah. you know. Uh, so that's that was the idea that we told me that I was trying to, to do like you know let's make a song of somebody that's innocent but gets caught on, on some kind of crime and is being gonna be put to death through lethal injection and that should be a good topic to make people think about this kind of situation you know I write them as I always did they just come out to me naturally I don't know. I, I don't have a method or I never really even um, try to understand much how my lyrics come out. They just come out this way. It's a natural, it's the way I sing. Uh, I sing in a certain way with my voice that's very natural to me. But I never actually study to find out why I sing in this certain way or why I write lyrics in this certain way. It, it's just natural, you know. It's yeah. something that I just do. That's I know how to do it, I'll do it and it's done, you know. Yeah. Soulfly, you know, doing some of that, you know, I don't really need 
I've said the tour reunion for my life, but I like to do it for the fans, really for the, just for the, mm -hmm. for the fans because they ask me so much. But I think the, the you know the person that they should ask is uh, mostly Paulo because he's the one that is been telling people that it's never gonna happen. Mm -hmm. So I mean I, I don't know really. If, if, if people want to find out, they should ask him. You know, they should ask him straight up. You know why you say it's not gonna happen and get an answer from him because mm -hmm. I can only do so much and I did try already and I got you know actually I got my brother convinced to do it and he will say that you will do it and I talked to Andreas and Andreas was actually saying okay I'll do it you know let's do this reunion and then Paul becomes the problem and it's kind of ridiculous actually you know because I mean, in that band right now, there's nobody original, you know. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I, wow. I created that band, I gave the name. Um, I started that band in, in, in when I was still in school with Igor. Mm -hmm. um, nobody from that time is on that band right now, okay, on when we first started, you know. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of weird to have, you know. Yeah. Them around carrying the name like it was theirs. They act like it's you know it was their band, but really it's not. You know, that was that was my neighbor's band from the beginning. Uh, I wouldn't mind doing it. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I, I think for the fans it would have been great. Mm -hmm. But we're still friends. Yeah. And. Um, was really a, a, a friendly split up. Uh, Soulfly is a very demanding band that demands you to really, you know, be a. Uh, you gotta, you gotta be like some kind of soldier to be in Soulfly, you know. And it's really not an easy band to be on. And I'd be the first one to say. We go to places not a lot of people don't go. We play places a lot of people don't play. Mm -hmm. Other side of the coin. We get to see the world and we get to travel the world and, and meet many people and it's you know it's a great life for yeah, the this musician. Is what you probably aimed at when you started the band. Of course, you know, it's my dream from the beginning yeah. was to do this. And when somebody is not feeling the same way as us, I always say from the beginning that if you're not hundred percent here with us, then you should not be here at all. And and Bobby wasn't like that anymore. And, you know, it was really a situation where nobody was even talking to him. You know, and, and he was not talking to anybody. You know, and it was really strange. You know, I never had that. You know, in, you know, in a band before like that. You know, it was like really kind of like what's going on with this guy. So to the point that uh, you, know, you know he started to drink a lot too. And that that was another problem. He started missing a lot of notes and really not playing the bass so good live and mm -hmm. that's another thing that you know cannot happen we have to you know make sure that we we, we play good every night you know a lot of people want to see us you know so we gotta be you know uh, if there's 10 people on the show or 10,000 I want so far to perform just the same I always say that to the other guys even though it's hard sometimes there's less people there you know there's no vibe here the vibe sucks, you know. Yeah, you still get it, you know, like those people there are your hardcore fans because they came here, maybe if there are only a hundred of them. They are the, they are your hundred most hardcore fans that came to see you, you know? Yeah. So yeah. it's very special that you, you played the same. And Bobby was not feeling like that anymore. So it was better, you know, for, for us to say to him, we think it's better for you to go mm -hmm. and we get somebody there be hungry again to be in the band and that's what we're looking for right now. I think there's always 
something that you can still play, you know. Um, I think for me, like, in the East, there's a lot of places that some people have been that I never, I, I never been there before, but I heard that, that they have shows now, like um, Singapore, Thailand, yeah. um, India, or Maiden was just in India, mm -hmm. you know. So and there's a lot of uh, huge metal crowds in these parts of the world. So I like to go to those places next. I think Conan is my favorite um, one, yeah. It's just because, like I said, it was written in a fan state of mind, okay. you know. And, and because it's like really mosh pit, mm -hmm. influence songs should be played live, it's the best, you know, for that kind of reason. This tour is uh, another week. Europe, yeah. and then we go to America. And we have an American tour, uh, mostly a House of Blues shows in a place called House of Blues. Uh -huh. They have a lot of concerts. Where is it? In, in America. It's like New York, New York. Uh, Texas, uh, Florida, uh, Michigan. You know, it, it's a whole U.S. tour. It's like I think like a month. Mm -hmm. And then we take a break for Christmas and January is also a break and then I think February I start tour again, uh, probably with Soulfly and then also with Cavalera Conspiracy mm -hmm. because Cavalera Conspiracy got a new album oh, yeah. coming out in March. So. I think it's really exciting record. It was really me and Ibu are more together on this album yeah. more than the first one. Anybody that liked the first one, gonna yeah. love this one. Because okay. you know it's the same elements mm -hmm. but better. So it's like it's like the first album but better, you know. It's still it was written um, and and played together. I, you know, I work out everything with Igor mostly. Yeah. Uh, but we also had Mark and Johnny, you know, also helping. Um, but uh, you know, a lot of the stuff was written by me, and um, Igor's performance is really amazing on the album. He plays like he's a teenager again. You know, I feel like I feel like I was recording, you know, a rise again with him. You know, there was so much energy that I had on the studio, you know? and because of that, I think was that the album is really. It's a really uh, excitement, really full of energy, you know, so when you listen to it from the beginning, from the first note, all the way to the end, it's just a really, really cool, aggressive album, really exciting kind of record. Mm -hmm. Okay. We keep that separate. Okay. Because we think Color and conspiracy, it's metal, you know. It's straight up metal. And, you know, I respect Igor dance stuff and DJ stuff, but I think yeah. that's for him to do. Okay, on don't mix up. Don't mix up, yeah. Okay. I'm not just thank you, thank you everybody that's been to the shows. Um, Looking forward to, to more shows, more people next year, festivals and everything. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks everybody for everything. Okay, thanks all for your time.